Let us all recite the auspicious invocation prayers, Mangala Charan. Om Akyana Pirandhasya Gyana Jana Salakaya Chakshurun Nilipan Yena Tasma Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Namaha Vishnam Sapitan Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamaya Radhati Svāntikam Vande Ham Shri Guru Shri Yodhata Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavāmstra Shri Rūpan Sāgrajātāram Sāgrajātāram Tantam Sajīvam Sāgvaitam Sāgadūtam Parijana Sahitan, Krishna Chaitan Devan, Shri Rahul, Krishna Pandahul, Sahagana Dalita, Shri Vishaka Dalita Mastra, Nama Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale, Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Nikunaya Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Prachari Nirvishesha Shunyavati Pacharapya Deshatari Guru Vagya Shirasi Dhritva Shaktya Vesha Swarupine Hare Krishna Ti Mantrena Paschatya Prachatarine Gaura Shri Rupa Siddhanta Saraswati Nishevine Radha Krishna Padam Bojo Bhringaya Gurave Namah Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Krishthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Nishevine Shri Varsha Bhānavi Devi Daitāya Kripādhe Krishna Sambandha Vinyāna Dāyine Prabhave Namaha Mahmuri Nilswala Premāna Shri Rupāluga Bhaktida Shri Gaura Karma Shakti Vigrahāya Namaste Namaste Gaura Vāni Shri Murtaye Gina Tarine Rūpānūpā Viruddhā Apasiddhānta Vantahārine Namo Gaura Kishorāya Sākshābhvayāya Murtaye Vipralambhā Sāmbodhe Pādhāmujāyate Namaha Namo Bhakti Vinodāya Satchidāvinda Nāmine Gaura Shakti Swarupaya Rupa Nula Varayate Gaura Virbhava Bhumeshwam Nirdeshta Sajjana Priya Vaishnava Sarabhoma Shri Jagannā Bhāyate Namaha Vāncha Kalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyayevacha Parikāvam Pāvanebhyo Vaishnavenya Namo Namaha Namo Maha Vadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishna Yama Krishna Chaitanya Namare Gaura Gisenaha Pancha Tattva Lakam Krishna Bhakta Rupa Swarupakam Bhakta Vataram Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakta Shaktikam He Krishna Karma Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Jayatam Surato Pango Mama Manda Matergati Matsarvasva Padam Bhojo Radha Vajanamohano 
दिव्यकृंदारण्यकुमाद श्रीमद्रत्नागर सिंहासन स्थौ श्री श्री राधा श्री लघोविंद देवो प्रेषालिभि से स्मरामि श्रीमंद्रास रसारंधि वंशी वट पट स्थित कर्षण वेणु स्वनय रोपे गोपीनाथ श्रिएस्तु न सप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय कृष्ण प्रेम मयि राधा राधा प्रेम मयो हरि जीवने निधने नित्यम राधा कृष्ण गतिर्म वृंदावनेश्वरी राधा कृष्ण वृंदावनेश्वर जीवने निधने नित्यम राधा कृष्ण गतिर्म जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य गणाधर श्रीवासादिगो भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम राम हरे हरे ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय भगवते वासुदेव नमस्कृत नष्टाभागवतेलोके भक्ति वासुदेव परावेद वासुदेव परावत वासुदेव परायोग वासुदेव पर क्रिया वासुदेव परम ज्ञान वासुदेव परम तप वासुदेव परो धर्मो वासुदेव परा गति कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनायोपाय पंकजनाय नम पंकजमाजिने नम पंकजनेत्राय नमस्ते पंकजाधरे आराध्यो भगवान्जे शतनय तम वृंदवन रम्या काचिपासना व्रजवधु वर्गे नया कल्पिता श्रीमद्भागवत प्रमाणमल प्रेम कुमर तो महाचैतन्य महाप्रभो मत विदम तत्रादरो 
Hare Krishna. Thank you very much to your devotees for your kind association. Hare Krishna. So, we are discussing on the theme of doing everything first class for Krishna. And this morning, we discussed the example of Sudama, the Brahman, Sudama Vipra. We covered till verse number 36. This is Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, Chapter 80, 80. Verse number uh, 37 is where we will begin. Shri Shukdev Goswami is telling Maharaj Parikshit about this very poor Brahman who did not need to do any financial planning because he had no finances. <laughs> He had no money. He was completely a kinchan. And he and his wife were completely absorbed in Krishna consciousness. But the wife felt very sorry for her husband that he has to live in such abject poverty. So she requested him that your friend is Sri Niketana. The husband of goddess of fortune, Shripati. So why don't you go to Dwarka? It is not that far. Just go to Dwarka and meet your friend, Krishna. He will remove all your poverty. Because as a wife, she felt very bad that she could not cook for her husband. Can you imagine the plight of a loving wife? That she cannot cook for her husband at all. There is nothing in the house. So she requested her husband again and again, Muhuhu. That go again and again she requested. Go to Krishna. Go to Krishna. And what did Sudama think? Bad idea or good idea? Why? Ayam hi paramo labho Krishna uttama shloka darshan. The darshan of uttama shloka Krishna is the supreme attainment in human life. So what my wife is saying is a good advice. If nothing, at least I will get darshan of Krishna. So let me go. But he is filled with anxiety, not knowing whether Krishna will recognize him, whether he will even be allowed in his tattered, dirty clothes inside Dwarka, Puri. But he was allowed. He went through the three gates. He crossed across the three guards, which indicate the three modes of material nature. And finally entering the spiritual world, which has got three types of potencies. Samvit, Sandhini, Ladini. And then he went straight to the palace of Rukmini and Krishna. And he was at the door when Krishna saw. And he immediately got up. He was sitting with Rukmini ji on the bed. He got up and he went straight out to receive his friend. And he embraced Sudama very warmly. Welcomed him with sweet words. Brought him inside the house, straight inside the bedroom. Made him sit on the bedstead. Washed his feet. Offered Arati. Offered sweet words. And sprinkled his charanamrit. Anybody knows the verse which says that the water that has washed the feet of a Vaishnav, the dust from the feet of a Vaishnav, and the Mahaprasad, the remnants of a Vaishnav, are very, very powerful. Very good. Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami writes in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrit. In relationship to Kalidas, the uncle of Raghunath Das Goswami. Bhakta Pada Dhuliyara Bhakta Pada Jal Bhakta Bhukta Ava Sheshati Namahabal. The three things are very powerful to give us Krishna Prem. The dust from the lotus feet of a Vaishnava, the water that has washed the lotus feet of a Vaishnava, and their Uchishta. Bhakta Pada Dhuli, Bhakta Pada Jal, Bhakta Bhukta Ava Shesh. Itin Mahabal. Very powerful. If you can get, get it. <laughs> like that. So, Krishna took the dust, the water, Padodaka, of his own devotee. We take Krishna's Padodaka. Akala Mrityu Haranam, Sarva Vyadhi Vinashanam, Vishnu or Padodaka Pitva, Shirsa Sandhari. Charanamrit. Every day in the temple we get. But Krishna is taking Charanamrit of his devotee. Madhbhakta Puja Vyadhi. Worship of my devotee is more important than my devotee. In this way, Krishna brought him inside, gave him tambul, mouth freshness. 
while well, because it will take time for rukmini to cook <laughs> so it will take time for rukmini to give us unexpected guest so while she was cooking he gave tambul to mouth freshener to sudama and started talking to him sudama holding his hand sudama do you remember how we were together in gurukul do you remember how one day our guru mata sent us to get firewood there was no gas in the cook in the kitchen in those days you had to get firewood and how do you get firewood by chopping down trees no the dry twigs and branches that naturally fall from trees they would never cut a tree it's considered a ghor pap sin to cut a living tree so tree that has naturally died or some dry branches from a tree that the tree has mercifully dropped you go deep in the forest it takes a lot of time to find such a such branches dry branches and they would bring that as firewood or go mata ki jai you take cow dung and make cow dung patty and use hmm? so some cow dung patty some dry wood so sudama and krishna were sent by guruma the wife of sandipani muni to fetch some dry wood sticks firewood so when so krishna is reminding do you remember we went and how krishna is so subservient krishna balram so subservient to their guru again if you read the charitra of sandipani muni in our bhakti literature it is described that sandipani muni also had a back story how he got krishna balram as his students so sandipani muni when he was a devotee when he was a disciple living in the ashram of his guru a real guru is first a real disciple unless one is a genuine disciple one cannot become a genuine guru so sandipani muni when he was living in the ashram of his guru his guru was very popular and he had many many disciples and he became concerned that i am becoming too famous everybody from all over the world is coming and becoming my disciple is it become like a fashion that oh if somebody wants to be known as a brahmana you take initiation from this sandipani muni's guru so the guru said i want to separate my genuine disciples from disciples who are here for some ulterior motive so his guru sandipani muni's guru pretended to go mad i know one such sadhu in vrindavan he used to sit at radha kund gaudiya vaishnav and chant three like every day and after some time he got vak siddhi vak siddhi means whatever he would say would come true for example if somebody is not getting a child and they come to him for blessings and he would say if krishna desires may you get a child and they would actually get a child so he became very famous and people started flocking him and you know he became afraid that people are coming to me for material gains they are not coming for parmartha the real thing that i am here to give so he started pretending to be a materialistic person anybody somebody would come from delhi to him he would say you have some money can you give me some money i need some money anybody would come to him he would ask them for money paisa do give me money give me money give me money then people said oh this baba ji he has gone he is so greedy he is so selfish he is not a genuine devotee a genuine sadhu will never ask for money so then they stopped coming they very happy <laughs> our shila gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj one couple from kolkata came they said we want to give you donation we want to build a nice ashram for you what can we offer you we are willing to offer you anything what can we offer you what did shila gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj ask ha huh? saving who can guess it says stay stay you stay here that was a man who came a businessman who came he said you stay so he ran away so a couple came a couple husband wife came rich husband wife from calcutta they said we can offer you anything what should we offer you rudinandan from you know what shila gaur kishoda was asked for no he said yes you can give me give me your stool वैष्णव 
they come and ask me for material blessings. So, so in Krishna Kathamrit Bindu magazine, there was an article about Srila Gaur Kishwadas Babaji Maharaj. His Grace Madhavananda Prabhu wrote. In that he says, the, the article is entitled, Give me your stool. <laughs> they ran away. They said, this Babaji has gone crazy. He's asking for a stool. <laughs> so, similarly, the Sandipani Muni's guru, he pretended that he had gone mad. He would spit at people. He would throw things at people, at his disciples. So disciples thought he has gone crazy. So they left him. They left him. But one disciple stayed with the guru. And he did this drama, his acting, for many months. Pretending to be crazy. And then for a few months, he would go in samadhi. Just he would sit like this, in samadhi. Just meditation on the Supreme Lord. And nobody stayed with him. Everybody left. Only one devotee, one disciple stayed with him, serving him, cleaning his stool, cleaning his urine, washing his clothes, putting tilak for him, feeding him with own hands for months. After many months, the guru came back to external consciousness, looked around. The ashram was very clean, well kept, but there was nobody there except this one disciple. So he asked the disciple, where is everybody gone? And uh, the guru said, the guru asked, where is everybody gone? And this disciple said that, uh, Guru Dev, everybody left. You were doing that Vichitra Leela. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody left. Mm, they could not understand, so they left. So then Guru Dev asked this boy, so why did you not go? He said, if I go, then who will clean your stool? Who will clean your urine? Who will cook for you? Who will wash your clothes? Who will serve you? Who will feed you? So did I not throw things at you? Did I not spit at you? He said, yes, you did, Guru Maharaj. But that is your Leela. My service is to serve you. Chakshudana dilo jai, janme janme prabhu se. How could I leave you and go? Who will take care of you? That disciple was Sandipani Guru. So the Gurudev said, my dear Sandipani, with my meditation, with my tapasya, with my devotion, I have captured the supreme personality of Godhead, Ananta Koti Brahmanda Nayak, one who is the Lord Sarveshwareshwara, Brajendra Kumar. I have captured him in my heart. And because you served me with such faith, I bless you, my dear child. That supreme Lord, Akhanda Koti Brahmanda Nayak, will become your disciple. <laughs> this was the blessing that Sandipani Muni got from his Gurudev. And therefore, we see Krishna Balram. Are his disciples today. What did Ishwar Puri do to get Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? He served his guru, Sri Pan Madhavendra Puri, cleaned the stool and urine. <clears throat> Once one devotee was asking very challenging questions to one of our Gurujans, very challenging questions, arguing. Finally, Guru Maharaj said, How many temple floors have you swept? <laughs> How many vessels you have washed in the kitchen? First do that. Then you will understand. Just by asking questions, just by arguing, you will not understand. Do some seva. Then your heart will become fertile. <laughs> His service is very important. So Krishna and Balram became disciples of Sandipani Muni because he was a guru sevak. Remember in the verse we read in the morning, Krishna said that nobody can please me as much as one who has done guru seva. Hmm? Guru Shushrushaya Yatha, verse number 34. Verse number 34, Krishna himself says, Nobody can uh, please me as one who has pleased me by Guru Seva. Naham Ijja Prajati Bhyam Tapaso Pashamenava Tushyayam Sarva Bhutatma Guru Shushrushaya Yatha. Verse 34 of chapter 80, 10th Canto Shivan Bhagavata. So now we come back to 37. This was an overview of what we covered in the morning. So let's read verse number 37. So Krishna is telling Sudama, hey Sudama, do you remember? One day we had gone and there was a uh, there was an unseasonal thunderstorm and rain in the forest, and both of us got stuck when we had gone to get dry firewood for Guru Mata. We got stuck. So Krishna continues. Surya Chastam Gatastavat. 
तमसा चावृता दिशह निम्न कूल जलमय नाज्ञात किंचन कृष्णा इज रिमाइंडिंग सुधा मा माय डियर फ्रेंड रिमेम्बर देन इट सडनली स्टार्टेड रेनिंग वी वेंट इन द डे टाइम टू गेट फायर वुड बट इट सडनली स्टार्टेड रेनिंग एंड देन सूर्यास्त आता देयर वाज सूर्यास्त द सन सेट टू मेक थिंग्स वर्स व्हेन इट रेन्स इट बिकम्स डार्क इवन इन डे टाइम एंड इमेजिन इफ द सन आल्सो सेट्स इट बिकम्स नाइट टाइम एंड इट इज क्लाउडी मींस नो स्टार्स एंड नो मून लाइट इट्स पिच डार्क इट्स एज डार्क एज इट गेट्स एंड द होल फॉरेस्ट वाज कवर्ड विद तमसा तमसा मींस डार्कनेस and there was flooding everywhere there was water flood everywhere so much so that we could not distinguish high land from low land everything was covered with water and they have gone to fetch dry firewood <laughs> bhakti is not easy shila <laughs> prabhupad says bhakti is simple but it is not hare krishna then krishna is reminding sudama we were besieged by powerful wind and rain we lost our way because it was dark everything was water covered we lost our way and then what did we do we simply held each other's hands we held each other's hand parasparam vane grihita hasta grihita hasta we held each other's hands and we wandered aimlessly in the forest we were just going from tree to tree didn't know where we are going we just held each other's hands and we went so shila shridhar swami comments that grihitva here means that they held each other's hands with one hand and in the other hands they were holding the dry firewood even though everywhere it was raining everything was wet they did not drop the firewood one hand they were holding and the other hand both of them were holding their dry firewood so our acharyas have commented this means that even when the going gets tough life becomes very difficult we should never drop the mission of the guru the dry fire wood is the mission of the guru we should never drop the mission of the guru therefore shila bhakti charu swami maharaj during initiation he would make the disciples promise i will chant 16 rounds every day i will follow the four regulative principles and i will never leave shila prabhupad this con because this is the mission of the guru krishna is teaching us don't drop the firewood no matter how difficult things are no matter how many challenges how many reversals do not drop the mission of the guru hold on to the mission and hold on to the devotees hari <laughs> bol we need each other hare krishna and then in verse number 39 अन्वेषमाणो आचार्यो पश्यद आतुरा कृष्ण स्टेलिंग सांदीपनी मुनि आवर गुरु कृष्णा इज टेलिंग सुदामा इज फ्रेंड आवर गुरु श्री सांदीपनि मुनी नाउ दे वर स्टक इन द फॉरेस्ट दे वर सपोज टू कम बिफोर नाइट फॉल बिफोर सनसेट सन हैज सेट इट्स रेनिंग हेवीली बोथ ऑफ देम आर स्टक इन द फॉरेस्ट लॉस्ट इन द फॉरेस्ट एंड दे डिड नॉट रिटर्न टू द आश्रम एट द एज ऑफ फाइव अ चाइल्ड वुड बी सेंट टू गुरुकुल कृष्णा वॉज लेट ही स्टार्टेड एट इलेवन एट द एज ऑफ इलेवन so 5 to 25 20 years a child would stay with the guru and the guru and the guru ma were the mother and father for those 20 years therefore there are seven mothers one of them is guru patni this is the reason so the guru and the guru's wife would give as much love or even more than the biological parents it was a very nice system first 5 years your parents pamper you like chanakya pandit said first 5 years you pamper i hope small kids are not listening <laughs> then at 5 you send the children to gurukul where they are trained lovingly but they are trained and because it's gurukul there is discipline so the children they get really trained up very nicely 
for 20 years. At 25, they come back and they only have good memories about their parents. Because parents have never punished them. <laughs> they only have fond memories of parents. They come, they serve the parents for some time and then parents take one prast. Because parents will become 50. <laughs> <laughs> and then the kids, they will they have their family, raise their family and everything. So this was the Vedic system. It was very nice. Scientifically designed. So, <clears throat> now imagine the anxiety of Sandipani Muni and his wife, Guruma, that these two boys, we send them in the forest to get firewood and they have not come back. Did a tiger devour them? Did a snake bite them? Did they lose their way? Did they fall into some valley, down a cliff? What happened to them? There was no cell phones. There's nothing, no way of knowing. You can imagine the anxiety that both of them had. But what Krishna is saying is very, very important. Hmm? Ravau means Ravi, son. He says, Etad viditva udite ravau. Udite ravau means Sandipani Muni, even though anxious for the return of Krishna and Sudama, waited for sunrise. Now, this is controversial. Why didn't he send a search party out at night? Why did he wait for the sunrise the next day morning? But it is, our acharyas have elucidated on this very important point. Krishna is saying to his friend Sudama that our Guru Sandipani Muni, understanding our predicament, the difficult situation we were in, set out to search for us after sunrise. Udite Rabha, after sunrise. Along with his disciples. And then he found us. He found us in distress. We were Atur. Acharyo Pashayat Aturam. That he saw us and he found us and we were so eager to meet our Guru. Guru they found us the next day. Because he set out to find for us only the next day. Our Acharyas have explained why this is so. And this is a very important point to understand. Superficially it looks like Sandipani Muni is at fault. But through this Leela, Sandipani Muni is teaching us an important lesson. Everybody attentive to hear? If someone is drowning, no matter how good our intentions are, only a person who is a good swimmer and who has been trained how to save a drowning person should jump in. For the sake of Parokkar, for the sake of helping others, if a person who doesn't know how to swim jumps in, now there will be two casualties instead of one. We are making the problem worse. It was raining heavily. There was a thunderstorm. One could not differentiate between high and low ground because everything was water covered. So there could be a deep crevice somewhere and everything is water covered. So one may drown, one may fall through. It actually happened when I was doing my when I was doing uh, one job in Bombay. I was working. Uh, there was flooding in Bombay and there was a gastroenterologist working in Bombay hospital in Bombay. Someone opened the manhole on the main road to let the water in. But the manholes were clogged with plastic. So they were not working. But the manhole was open. And one child fell through. There was knee deep water. One could not see where the manhole bloop, She just went inside. And this gastroenterologist had just parked his car and was going to Bombay hospital to work. He saw that and wanted to help. And he rushed there. He also probably didn't know swimming. And he also went down and both of them died. So the lesson we learn is help when you can help. But if you are not qualified to help, don't jump in because you will increase the casualty. You will increase the damage. Practically for us, what this means is, I will give you one example. I know one devotee, she went to college and she had a friend who was atheist, sworn atheist. And because they were friends, she thought, well, I am a devotee, I will help her. And she made close friendship with that girl who was atheist. She said, I will make friendship and I will convert her with my love, with my friendship. Six months later, she also became atheistic, not atheist, 
but she was influenced by the atheistic thought because this atheist was such a hardcore atheist and she had such serious doubts about the existence of god why bad things happen to good people what is god doing when the wars are going on what is god doing when the terrorist attacks are going on where is god where is it was such a strong propaganda that this girl who was chanting 16 rounds stopped chanting almost and was very much disturbed by atheistic philosophy stopped hearing and reading but fortunately she had some devotee friends who saved her and pointed out to her that because of this bad association with this atheistic girl you have also become atheistic you stop associating with her so she was asking but why this happened i should be able to convince well you will be able to convince if you are yourself strong spiritually but if you are not strong and you try to jump in to help somebody you will also drown so only a life guard who has got special training to save drowning people can jump and save so this is the point sudama krishna and sandipunya is teaching us that when the weather was so dangerous that sandipani muni could have lost more disciples that night if he had gone so to minimize more casualty he was worried he was praying he was anxious for krishna and sudama but he waited until the opportune moment came when he could actually help so this is important in spiritual life to all of us we should try to jump in and help only where we have the blessings and the necessary qualification to help is this clear very good otherwise leave it to the experts another person there was a live i'm telling you a true story this devotee came to me afterwards there was a live debate on facebook about uh whether god is a person specifically whether prabhupada's books are authentic or not and that pers those people the group of people who on facebook held that live debate they were openly challenging any iskon devotees want to jump and they were taking names of big big preachers i will not name but they were taking names of big big preachers this prabhu that prabhu open challenge come on join the debate live debate now one boy from delhi who i know he is a student he is not even initiated but chants 16 rounds and nice boy he thought mm, they are challenging prabhupa they are challenging is gone now these are big big mayavadis he joined representing is gone and he argued with them and he, in 2 3 minutes he didn't he didn't know what he was doing he could not respond to their question because he himself doesn't know the philosophy he has not even done disciple course yet <laughs> but his, his intentions were good but he was not qualified he was thoroughly defeated and he was told go now get your seniors and come and then he called me that prabhu ji i was i didn't know what to speak i was thoroughly defeated please help me i said who told you to go <laughs> under whose guidance did you go there who is guiding you uh, no one prabhu i saw the debate and i thought i have to protect prabhu pal i said no leave it to the experts <laughs> there are so many senior devotees in the movement who can you know cut those arguments to pieces why are you going you are not qualified to do it you wait you do bhajan you grow first yourself spiritually see when a plant a banyan seed you plant it's a sapling of a banyan tree it's small how do you protect it from the sheep who will come and eat it and the cows who will come and eat it fence. you make a fence around it you protect it that same little sapling one day will become a huge banyan tree then 100 cows will come and sit in the shade <laughs> of that same tree which had to be protected from those cows so when we are new devotees we are like a small sapling we need protection we need watering the banyan tree doesn't need watering it will sustain for years also if there is a drought there are such deep roots but when we are small spiritually we need protection uh, we cannot a small sapling cannot challenge cow or a goat come let me see if you can eat me <laughs> the cow will come and eat it up it will finished but when that same plant becomes a banyan tree then it has no fear of even 1000 cows they can come and go they cannot do anything to that banyan tree similarly our guru varga they can have thousands of disciples <laughs> they can give shelter to so many people they don't have to worry because they have become a banyan tree but we are small plants <laughs> so we have to be under the shelter of the banyan trees Like a Purva Prabhu and Kamalini Mata ji, they are fixed up, experienced, successful Vaishnavas who have given their life to Shri Prabhu Pad. Serve the pure devotee. 
Hmm? So we have to be under their shade. Until we also someday will become banyan trees. <laughs> but we should, a plant should not think, okay, I am a banyan tree. The banyan is in my DNA. <laughs> so, no, but you are not manifested yet. <laughs> you wait. So that's a very important lesson we learn here from Sanji Pani Muni. He was not a coward. He was just practical. So then, Sandhi Panimuni finally finds Krishna and Sudama and then he speaks to them in verse number 40. Aho he putra ka yuyam Aho he putra ka yuyam Asmad arthe ti dukhita Asmad arthe ti dukhita Atma vai prani naam prishthas Atma vai prani naam prishthas Tam anadritya matparaha Sandipan when he saw Krishna and uh, Sudama. Oh, you are fine. You are alive. Nothing happened to you. You are so relieved. Oh, my children, he's saying. Oh, my putraka. Oh, my children. Oh, oh my put ch children. You suffered so much for my sake. For my sake. This body is most dear to every living creature. But you are so dedicated to me, your spiritual master, that you completely disregarded your own comforts. Because you are mat para. You are so devoted to me. Sandhi Panimun is glorifying Krishna and Sudama. That for me, you risked your life. You sacrificed so much for me. I am so grateful to you. Then he says, verse 41, very important. This verse, anyone who is initiated, anyone who is planning to get initiated, <laughs> should remember this verse. Srimad Bhagavatam, 10.80.41. Ready? These are the words of Sandhi Panimuni to Krishna and Sudama. Etad eva hi sat shishyai hi. Etad eva hi sat shishyai hi. Kartavyam guru nishkritam. Kartavyam guru nishkritam. Yadvai vishuddha bhavena. Yadvai vishuddha bhavena. Sarvarthatmar panam gurau. In this verse, Sad Shishya is defined. Who is a genuine disciple? So we should immediately become alert. Because we all want to be genuine disciples. So a definition of a Sad Shishya is there. Etad evahi Sad Shishyai. Who is Sad Shishya? One who tries to repay the debt to their spiritual master by offering the spiritual master with pure hearts their wealth and even their very lives. His grace, Brahmananda Prabhu did not fear going to Pakistan when India-Pakistan war was going on in 1970s. To preach. Not on a peace mission. To preach Krishna consciousness. And the war broke out. And Hindus were being slaughtered in Pakistan. And here is a sannyasi in saffron with a shaved head preaching Bhagavad Dharma in Pakistan. And Prabhupada was in constant anxiety. Prabhupada Lilamrit describes constant anxiety. Where is my Brahmananda? Where is my Brahmananda? And after some time when Brahmananda Prabhu came back to India, he landed in Mumbai. Prabhupada is in Mumbai. Prabhupada said, call him. I want to see him. And when Brahmananda Prabhu came, Prabhupada with his hands, he was touching every part of his body. Are you okay, Brahmananda? Are you okay? You didn't get hurt anywhere? Like that, like a loving father to a child who, has, who was lost and now found such love. And such fearlessness. Actually, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj said, if we analyze the entire Gaudiya Parampara from the time of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, listen to this carefully, from the time of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to the present time, if you analyze the entire Gaudiya Parampara, it's a Guru Shishya Parampara, Spiritual master disciple, spiritual master disciple. If you analyze, this includes Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's disciples, like the six Goswamis of Vrindavan, their disciples, their Narottan, Shamananda, Sri Ramas, all this, Vishwanath Chakra Thakur, all these great, great stalwarts, Balde Vidya Bhushan, disciples of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraj Thakur, disciples of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, the whole Gaudiya Parampara, if you analyze the 13 generations, Srila Narayan Maharaj said, I can say, with full confidence, our Gaudiya Parampara has not seen Guru Sevaks of the caliber as Swami Maharaj. Srila Narayan Maharaj said that our Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada's 
disciples in iskon are the greatest disciples our parampara has ever seen from the time of sri chaitanya mahaprabhu why because in our parampara always the preaching was done to pious hindus shila prabhu pa came to the west where people had not even heard about krishna about chaitanya mahaprabhu they knew nothing and here a 70 year old man comes and tells them some philosophy that sounds outlandish and they accept it they had no need to accept that philosophy they had their own philosophy either they were atheists agnostics christians muslims jews they had their own culture but they gave everything up for shila prabhu pak for their swami ji who had nothing he was living in a store front and they were paying the rent he just came with a box of first canto and they could not even understand that have have any of you seen the original first canto that prabhu pak brought in three volumes we have one copy in prabhu pak's room in new paniya ji dham atlanta shikhi mahiti prabhu showed me that book and i read i have photos of few pages the language is so difficult to understand His Grace High Agree Prabhu, His Holiness Jayadev Swami Maharaj, His Holiness Satsurup Das Goswami Maharaj, they have modified the language later on because they were the English editors, so they made it in a way that we can understand. But Prabhu Pad's English, that British English, very difficult to understand. I have read the original Bhagavad Gita Prabhu Pad brought. If we were to read it today, believe me, we will not be able to understand it the way we understand this, what we have now. It was very difficult English because Prabhu Pad had no uh, experience of talking to the Westerners. you see so prabhu pak comes these devotees they surrender to him as their spiritual master and they just give up their careers their family everything to serve him shri narayan maharaj says this there is no example like this and what is the quality of these disciples they are pure devotees and they expanded the movement in 11 years they helped prabhu pak grow from zero Uh, temples to 108 temples where has this ever happened in the history and here we are sitting in the presence of those very disciples they have been held as the greatest examples of guru sevaks in the history of the gaudiya vaishnav parampara can you imagine someone american learning sanskrit and becoming a scholar of panini grammar and harinam amrit vyakaran of shri jiva goswami that is our gopi pranadan prabhu right here gopi pranadan prabhu these are americans and he established a ashram uh vidyapeet and govardhan where he is training devotees in sanskrit this is just one example of how prabhupad even made sanskrit scholars and then he translates tatva sandarbha translates brihad bhagavata amrit krishna lila stava gopi pranand prabhu who was an american who knew nothing about sanskrit prabhu pa someone like shripad aindra prabhu he is doing kirtan prabhu pa says looked at him says jai bas that became the mission of his life and he created close to 500 original melodies of hari krishna mahamantra shripad aindra prabhu shripad aindra prabhu 500 melodies you listen to any kirtan of aindra prabhu he will never repeat the same melody more than two times have you not heard he will sing it two times he'll go to the next melody two times so you hear a one hour kirtan you will hear i don't know how many different melodies of hari krishna mahaman and you see he has left a legacy madhav prabhu amal hari nam prabhu so many devotees today who are the leading kirtaniyas they are products of shiva aindra prabhu's mercy one jai of shila prabhu pa He was doing kirtan. Prabhupada came down, and the Prabhu was reeling kirtan. Prabhupada looked at him. Jai, boss. That Jai he took. That I have to just do kirtan now. He established twenty-four hours kirtan. Janani was Prabhu Pankaj Shankar Prabhu. Twins come. Prabhupada says, "You worship Radha Madhav." Boss. They became fifty years more than fifty years. Of, this is first class doing things for Krishna. First class. They are such amazing pujaris. They know everything. about deity worship they became perfect pujaris british boys who just came to india to look for something spiritual one 
His Holiness Indra Mohan Swami, Prabhupada pats him on the back, slaps him hard and says, your life will be supplied. <laughs> so much difficulty. But when you come back to Godhead, Golo Prindavan, it will be very simple and sublime. And now, he was just an American sharpshooter in the army. Sniper. <laughs> and have you heard his silver spoon yeah. story? <laughs> have you heard Father Peer? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, you feel like jumping in joy. Yeah, oh. <laughs> I cannot. It is. It is only His Holiness Indra Swami Maharaj can narrate it. When he narrates it, it's like he is specially empowered by Shri Prabhupada to speak that past time. No matter how much I try, I can hear it five times and then try to repeat. I cannot. It is out of this world. My request to all of you is: it's on YouTube. Go home and listen to the lecture. His Holiness Indra Swami Maharaj gave it in Radha Gopinath Mandir. Chavati. It's called Father Peer. Go to YouTube and type Father Peer Indra Dhanna Swami. You will cry, you will laugh, you will jump, you will dance. I promise you. Just by listening to that lecture. You will jump in joy. You will cry and you will laugh like anything. Is it Father Peer? Father Peer. Father Peer. P-I-E-R-R-E. Father Peer by His Holiness Indra Dumna Swami Maharaj. It is incredible. Incredible story. Maithil, you remember we heard it? <laughs> we were going mad. This is so good. This is nectar. We were saying. This is amazing. Father Peer Indra Dumna Swami. Please listen to that on YouTube. <laughs> I dare not say that story because I cannot. <laughs> it is out of this world. So these are the types of devotees. Look here in North Carolina. His Holiness Bir Krishna Goswami Maharaj comes here. There is not one devotee in North Carolina. Invest so much time, so much love, so much heart and has developed this beautiful congregation. He's available to all of you. He's giving you shiksha. He's giving you diksha, nourishing all of you. It is such a blessing to have such a sad shishya of Srila Prabhupada right here in Hillsborough to guide and inspire all of you. Go. These are the disciples of Srila Prabhupada. Hundreds of them. <laughs> so it's it's incredible. He tells one uh, 18, 19 year old Brahmachari, I want you to have 50,000 disciples. I want you to develop Mayapur. That 19 year old Brahmachari takes sannyas at 21 and becomes Srila Jayapataka Swami Bhavesh. <laughs> what is this? Milwaukee to Mayapur. <laughs> Where has this world seen such examples of preaching? Maharaj used to go to Bangladesh, initiate the whole village. And they were just spellbound. This is an American sadhu, six feet, two inches tall, and he speaks Bengali better than us. <laughs> what is this? This, my dear friends, is Srila Prabhupada's legacy. Very good. Hare Krishna, we can go on. <laughs> but Sandipani Muni said, it is the duty of a true disciple, such Shishya, to repay their debt to the spiritual master by offering their very life. Sarva Artha and Atma Arpanam Guru. Atma Arpanam, offer yourself to the Guru. Only then you can repay the debt. But still you cannot. <laughs> You boys in text 42, he says, Tushto ham bho bijak shreshtha. Tushto ham bho bijak shreshtha. Satya santu manoratha. Satya santu Chandams ayata yamani. Chandams Bhavant iha paratracha. You boys are first class brahmanas. Sandipani Muni is congratulating his students, Krishna and Sudama. You are first class, such shishyas. Yes. May all your desires be fulfilled. I am very satisfied. with I am satisfied with you. See, we say, yesterday we discussed, we are in ISKCON for only one purpose. What is it? Samsidhir Haritoshanam. 
तुष्टो अहम गुरु इज प्लीज गुरु इज प्लीज मीन कृष्ण इज प्लीज कैसे प्रसाद भगवत प्रसाद सो हिज ब्लेसिंग हिम दैट मे द वेदिक मंत्र यू हैव लर्न never lose their meaning to you in this world or in the next in the purport uh, our acharyas have given a comment that what this means is when we leave food for a long time the food becomes stale in bhagavad gita krishna says don't eat food that has been cooked more than 3 hours ago because the food becomes stale similarly if we are not careful in bhakti right now we may be very enthusiastic but if we are not careful in bhakti we commit offenses we criticize devotees or we take our sadhana lightly we don't take our chanting we don't prioritize our chanting our bhajan then krishna consciousness will lose its taste for us will lose the taste the kirtan that we used to enjoy huh, now it becomes tell me something new Oh, that story I have already heard. That past time I know. Yeah, tell me some new story. Good jokes, bolo. One devotee actually said that Prabhu, your class is so boring. You should tell some jokes. You should make the audience laugh. Otherwise, so now to digest Hari Katha, we need chutkuli. We need jokes to digest. Is the Hajmola for Hari Katha? Did Shukdev Goswami tell any jokes? Did Shila Prabhu Pad ever tell jokes in Bhagavatam class? No. This Hari Katha, it is pure, uttam shlok. So anyway, so we, so this happens when we are not careful in bhakti. My dear friends, we have to be careful about two things to protect our devotion. Everybody attentive? Yes. Two things. One is we should never become lax about our sadhana. The sixteen rounds that we have promised our spiritual master, we should never become lax. when his holiness kadamba kanan swami maharaj was in his last days in vrindavan not even a year ago in april 2023 he had colon cancer it had completely blocked his colon he had stopped eating altogether i personally spoke with his holiness jayadev swami maharaj when he came to atlanta now see when our guru varga they do certain things they are to inspire us not everything can be imitated i am giving a disclaimer not everything can be imitated his holiness kadamba kanan swami maharaj was a very special personality he came just after prabhu pad's disappearance and in the late 1970s and he did in incredible services for shila prabhu pad so i have no doubt in my heart that his holiness kadamba kanan swami maharaj was a pure devotee absolutely no doubt everything was glorious about maharaj his holiness jayadev swami maharaj told me personally that his holiness kadamba kanan swami maharaj did not even take a tylenol for his pain his exact words were he did not even take a aspirin for pain no medicines even though he was on hospice and you know doctors had prescribed morphine and all those pain medicines because he said whatever has happened to me it is my karma radharani has given me and if i take this medicines they will increase my dependence on the medicine or these pain medicines may cloud my consciousness i may become sedated because of the pain medicines and i want to be fully conscious of krishna so till the end he did not take one pain killer at all so he had given up eating and he was struggling to chant because of so much pain and he was terminally ill he had profound weakness imagine not eating anything there is no energy in the body so he was completely feeling physically depleted and he was struggling to chant at that time shila jayadev maharaj told me that he told kadamba karan maharaj maharaj you are so ill right now you do i am your spiritual master i am telling you you do not have to chant 16 rounds because i see the struggle the pain even to pick up your beads is a struggle for you you don't have to chant 16 rounds one round will count as 16 kadamba karan maharaj held shila jayadev maharaj's hand and said maharaj with tears in his eyes please don't give that instruction please don't give that instruction i want to chant 16 rounds the day i leave my 
Sakshi Mala, my counter beads should read 16. I want to chant 16 till my last breath. Don't give that instruction. Because if you give instruction, then I'll have to follow. So don't give that as an instruction. I want to chant 16 rounds. And Maharaj said, even the last day, he chanted the 16 rounds. Despite so much pain and discomfort. Why? Because he had Nishtha in Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, every day you chant your 16 rounds nicely. You follow the four regulative principles. I will personally take you back home back to it. This is a fact. If 16 rounds we chant attentively and we are not doing sinful activities, where will we go? Will we go to hell? Will Yamdutas come? Someone who is wearing Gopi Chandan Tilak and Tulsi Kanti and chanting Hare Krishna? Will they come if we are following the four regulative principles? We are leading a as sinless life as possible. So if Yamdutas don't come, who will come? <laughs> and then where will we go? <laughs> Haribol. So he had full faith in Prabhupada that just by this 16 rounds attentively, I will get everything. Even the last day, he had Giriraj in his room. Kadamakaran Maharaj, Giriraj Shila. He always carried that Giriraj everywhere with him. And Nitai Das was his personal servant, the Miradanga player. So I was hearing his memories. His tribute to his spiritual master. And Nitai Prabhu was saying that uh, just before the departure, I opened the darshan and I bade the Giriraj Shila, did Giriraj Seva, and I opened the darshan. And Maharaj was lying in bed. He turned towards the deities and he had nothing in his hand. Looking at Giriraj, he was offering Aarti like this. Kirtan was going on, Bibi going, Maharaj came. There was amazing loud Kirtan going on and he was doing like this, looking at Giriraj. Such consciousness. He was waiting for the darshan to open. The seva to be completed, darshan to open. Taking darshan of his Giriraj in Sri Vrindavan Dham, surrounded by devotees, Kirtan, whole life of dedicated service. This, my dear friends, is what we want. So if we want this, we have to take care of two things. One is, we have to chant the vows of initiation. Four regulative principles and 16 rounds, very strictly we have to follow. No matter what the temptation is, no matter what the distraction is, we must chant. I was reading Ramayana a few days ago. So when uh, Vishwamitra Muni, Ram and Lakshman come to Janak Maharaj in Janakpuri, before their marriage to Sita, Janak Maharaj receives them with so much happiness. Vishwamitra Muni, oh Dasharak Maharaj's sons, Ram and Lakshman, please come, please come. Welcomes them, gives them a comfortable place to stay in his own palace. Speaks to them. But as soon as it is Gayatri time, in the evening, he says, I'm very happy you have come. This is, you stay in this palace with me. This is your home. Stay as long as you want. Whatever you want to tell me, I am at your service. Now, please excuse me because I have to go and do my bhajan. It's time for my worship. I have to do the yadne in the evening, my gayatri, everything. So when it comes to sadhana, we have to be very cordial and hospitable. But we cannot neglect our sadhana. We can do the sadhana and then come back in the seva. But we have to do our rounds. Hmm? Such an example. He excused himself. Hmm? So like that. So first is we have to do our 16 rounds. Not complete quality. Nicely. Those 16 rounds should be the best quality. You want to share what we discussed in the car about oh, His Holiness Kadamakaran Maharaj? No, you take no, it. You are the best speaker. I want everyone to hear from you. Thank you, sir. So, Prabhuji just shared this beautiful, uh, so, so powerful uh, sadhana of His Holiness Kadamakaran Maharaj. And Maharaj, when he used to chant his rounds, he used to not go to the next beat until he has chanted the entire Mahamantra with full attention on the beat. So imagine you're chanting on a beat, and if your mind is wandered, no going to the next beat. <laughs> Who can do that? <laughs> it was so amazing. So when you were mentioning that it just take him three hours to do a 16 round, but with that complete attention, that is complete absorption. So also, I was listening to an interview of Maharaj 
after the diagnosis, when he decided, I will go to all the temples where I have disciples and um, then I will go to Vrindavan and stay there till the end. So he did an interview with Namras Prabhu of New York. Namras Prabhu. Another product of Ainda Prabhu. Namras Prabhu. So he did an interview on that podcast. The late morning uh, program, yeah. So Kadamakaran Maharaj, it's on YouTube. He did it. I was listening to that. So Kadamakaran Maharaj said that I was the temple president of Iskon Vrindavan, Sri Sri Krishna Balram Mandir. So he said management means a lot of things we have to do that are not sweet. <laughs> there is sweetness of Krishna consciousness, and then there is management. <laughs> His Holiness Bhakti Dir Damodar Maharaj. Everybody knows Shila Bhakti Dir Damodar Maharaj. Disciple of Shila Bhakti Tirtha Swami Maharaj. He says in his analysis, he's a Bhakti Vaibhav teacher. In his analysis of the uh, Brahma Vimohan Leela, he says that why Brahmaji got bewildered? His own as Bhakti Tirtha Damodar Maharaj says, it is because he was in management. <laughs> <laughs> as Brahmaji, he has to manage so many things. Yeah, the demons are coming, complaining, the demigods are coming, he has to sort out everything. He was in management. That's why he got bewildered. But when he came as Haridas Thakur, he said, I will not take any management position. I will be Bhajananandi. <laughs> I have done enough management as Brahma. Uh, these 60, 70 years that I am with Mahaprabhu, I just want to do Bhajan. <laughs> so he didn't take any position. And Mahaprabhu also did not give him any management. <laughs> just sit and Siddha Babali chant. Do your Bhajan. So Srila Bhakti Dir Maharaj said like that. So Kadamakar Maharaj was saying, as a temple president, I have to do management. And sometimes you have to give a feedback to devotees who are way more advanced than you as a manager. Like His Holiness Bhakti Rasamari Swami Maharaj says, one day Shripad Aindra Prabhu was told to do the Tulsi Aarti in the temple. So Aindra Prabhu started Tulsi Aarti. Namo Namo Tulasi Krishna Preyasi. He did once, all the without repeating. But, 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 but once he did the Tulsi Arati, chanted Hare Krishna Kirtan and went out till 9 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> so that day, there was no Bhagavatam class and there was no Japa and there were no announcements. Because Aindarbu would not stop and everybody was dancing. And His Holiness Bhakti Rasamari Maharaj is the temple president. Now he's a young sannyasi. He just became a sannyasi and Shrivat Aindarbu is Prabhupada. You know, he's like Guru to him. <laughs> How do you tell your Guru? But still, as a temple president, he has to make sure that the morning program is followed as established by Srila Prabhupada. So now he had to go to Hendra Prabhu to tell him. So he went to Hendra Prabhu, offered obeisances. <laughs> he said, Hendra Prabhu, there was no Bhagavatam class today. <laughs> and he said, well, the essence of Bhagavatam class is to Nama Kankita from yourself. <laughs> Said, <laughs> how does Bhagavatam conclude the last verse? Nama Sankirtanam Yasya. That's what you were doing. <laughs> Said, yes, you are right, Aina Prabhu. But maybe from tomorrow, <laughs> we can have the Kirtan after the Bhagavatam class. <laughs> okay, 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 I got it. <laughs> so, Kadamagaran Maharaj is saying that I was a temple president and I had to take so many difficult decisions regarding devotees. He said, I would wake up really early in the morning at around 1.30. And by 2 o'clock, I had showered, tilak, fresh clothes, sitting on my asan, chanting. And for two and a half hours, I would chant from 2 to 4.30 every morning. Then he would come for Mangal Aarti, 4.15, 4.30. After two, two and a half hours of chanting. He said, I would finish my 16 rounds in two hours, 15 minutes, two and a half hours. And then I would come for Mangal Aarti by 4.30. Attend the Mangal Aarti, student both Mangal Aarti and the Vibhava Rishesha. I would stay for Tulsi Aarti, Narsim Aarti. And when the Japa start, when the announcement started, announcements and Japa, I would leave. I would go to my room and read Sri Chaitanya Charitamrit for two hours every morning. And then I would come back for Guru Puja, Darshan Aarti and Bhagavatam class. I would attend Bhagavatam class. Then I would go with devotees and take Prasad at 9 o'clock. 8 o'clock? The Prasadana is what? Nine. Yeah, 9 o'clock. 9, 9. 
said 9.30, I would enter my office to work as a temple president. And Tadamukar Maharaj says, and at 9.30, all hell would break loose. <laughs> With all the complaints, all the management would come on me. But I was ready for it. So I was ready for it. Because I had done two and a half hours of chanting. Mangal Arti, Narsim Arti, Tulsi Arti. Two hours of Chaitanya Charitamrit, which talks about all devotee relationships. <laughs> Shringar Arti, Guru Puja, Srimad Bhagavatam, and Krishna Prasad with devotees. So I was ready. <laughs> 9.30 I was ready. So the two things we have to remember is we have to prioritize our sadhana. And sadhana means chanting our 16 rounds very attentively every day. Not on weekends. Every day. Every day. Seven days a week, 365 days a year. 16 rounds must be attentive. No compromise on that. And it is best to chant in the morning. Anybody who has chanted in the morning will know. Sometimes devotees ask me, can we go for Japa work? Yes, you can, but not the 16 rounds. Prabhupada chanted his 16 rounds in the room. He chanted in the Japa also, but those were his extra rounds. In fact, if you read TKG diary by Shila Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj, Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj writes, Prabhupada chanted 64 rounds all his life. He writes in that book. Prabhupada chanted 64 rounds all his life. When he became Jagat Guru, and he got busy with translations and managing the society and traveling. It slowly reduced. But Prabhupada never chanted less than 16 rounds. Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj writes like that. Slowly, slowly it decreased because his responsibility is increased. Of course, Prabhupada doesn't have to chant. He's a Nitya Siddha. He's always with Krishna. He loves Krishna. Always, naturally. But to teach us as Acharya, Prabhupada is saying, he used to go for the morning walks for health reasons. Because that New York doctor told him. <laughs> that he... Yeah, the intern, that the Jewish guy, intern told him that the problem with you, Swamiji, is you chant too much. <laughs> you need to exercise. Okay, from Brahmanam Prabhu was <laughs> ready to <laughs> give that intern good. <laughs> but Prabhu said, no, no, he, what he's saying is right. <laughs> Krishna spoke through him. <laughs> so, like that. So, uh, yes, we can walk and chant, we can do Japa walk, but those are extra rounds. The 16 rounds have to be sitting in an asan with full concentration. That is japa. Like we discussed the definition of japa in the morning. That cannot happen when we are walking. Yes. Hmm. So like that. Once uh, His Holiness Gopal Krishna Goswami Maharaj came to Atlanta. This was uh, when I was still in residency. So it was I think 2011 or 2012. And Maharaj uh, tripped on the sidewalk in front of the temple and he got badly bruised. And he hurt his ribs also. He had a rib contusion. So I was called immediately to serve Maharaj. So I came, I examined Maharaj and everything. And actually the first question a doctor asked is, how did this happen? Maharaj, what happened? Like, did you lose your consciousness and fall? Or did you trip and fall? Because I have to distinguish what happened. So I asked, and Maharaj was hesitating to tell. I said, Maharaj, I need to know how you fell. What happened? Did, the, did everything spin around you? Or you felt you were spinning? Or you just passed out? Or you tripped over something, I need to know, Maharaj. Maharaj was hesitating, he was not telling me. I said, Maharaj, can you please tell me? Because the treatment will be different based on what happened. He said, uh, he, there were some other Janardhan Maharaj was there, a few other devotees were there. He said, can everybody go out? Then everybody went out and I was alone with Maharaj. And Maharaj said, I was chanting Japa and I went in ecstasy. I was chanting Japa. I said, I got so carried away. I got so absorbed. I didn't know what I was doing. And next thing I know, I was on the floor. Uh, I was on the sidewalk. I said, I, was, I, should, I, said, I, should, I think I should not chant so much when I'm walking. <laughs> this, is, this is a pure devotee. See, this is what Prabhupada has given the world. These are the Prabhupada disciples that we are talking about. Such high caliber. <laughs> well, I, I can say so much. I had such divine experiences with Maharaj, actually. But maybe not appropriate now. So, yeah. You said there are two, two things. So, one is sadhana. And second is, we should never do Vaishnava Prad. Never? Do we never do Vaishnava Prad. Vaishnava Prad. We should never offend devotees. Because Mahaprabhu says that is the Hati Mata. It is the mad elephant offense. It will come, the mad elephant will uproot the tree of our bhakti and throw it away. And the problem is, have you ever seen a plant that has been uprooted? It remains green for many days. So we may commit Vaishnava Prad and apparently nothing will happen. 
We can still sit on the Vyasa and give classes. We can still distribute books. We can still lead kirtans. Devotees will still offer obeisances to us. But we have been uprooted. We have been disconnected from the soil of bhakti. It's just a matter of time before the leaves shrivel up and dry. So be very careful with Vaishnava. If we safeguard these two things, our bhakti will flourish. We prioritize our sadhana and we avoid Vaishnava. Two things. So, <clears throat> so the Sadhipani Muni is blessing Krishna and Sudama that may you never lose taste in the mantras that you have learned. May the mantras remain ever fresh. May you always have the enthusiasm for new devotee. How new devotees, when they come to Krishna, there is enthusiasm. They will attend a kirtan. They will say, wow, what kirtan? They will attend a self-discovery course. And they will say, wow, what philosophy? We should have that childlike innocence, that enthusiasm throughout our Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness should never become stale for us. That was the blessing that was given. Hmm? <clears throat> and then, Krishna continued speaking to his friend that in this way, my dear Sudama, we had many such experiences with our Gurudev. Like Gurudev blessed us. We had many such experiences. And then Sudama replies to Krishna. After Krishna speaks like this, Sudama replies. Text 44. Shri Brahmana Uvacha Kim Asma Bhir Ani Vrittam Deva Deva Jagat Guru Bhavata Satya Kamena Yesham Vaso Guru Abhu Sudama is telling Krishna what could I possibly have failed to achieve? Oh Deva Dev, oh Lord of all the Lords, oh Jagat Guru, oh Universal Teacher Krishna, since I was personally able to live with you. All my desires were fulfilled <laughs> at the house of the spiritual master. And then in the final verse, verse number um, 45, Sudama tells Krishna that, oh Almighty Lord Krishna, you are the personified form of the Vedas. You are the sole source of all auspiciousness in life. Shreyasam Tasya Gurushu. That you took up residence at the school of a spiritual master is simply one of your pastimes. Vaso Atyanta Vidambanam. It is very surprising, very bewildering that you would accept a guru. You are Jagat Guru. Vasudeva Jagat Guru. Krishna Mande Jagat Guru. But you accepted a guru Atyanta Vidambanam. This is very, very surprising. Hmm? So this is just your Leela. He says, it is your Leela that you accepted a spiritual master. Actually, Krishna accepted a spiritual master himself to teach us a very valuable lesson. And we'll conclude with this lesson. That whatever we do in life, we have to be under the guidance of our Gurudev. If we act independently, then we are by ourselves. If we are following the instructions of Guru, then we are always protected. Just now in the Jagannath Puri Kartik Yatra, my spiritual master Shila Radhana Swami Maharaj made a very profound statement. He said, Vrindavan is where you are serving your spiritual master. Isn't it beautiful? Vrindavan is where you are serving your spiritual master. Shila Prabhupada wants so many temples to be built. So today, if Srila Dear Krishna Goswami Maharaj is fixing some water leak in the temple, Maharaj is in Vrindavan. Vrindavan is where you are serving your spiritual master. You are at the airport distributing books. Prabhupada wanted his books to be distributed. You are in Vrindavan. But if you are doing something on your own, without the permission blessings of Gurudev, it may apparently be something spiritual, but if you are not doing it with proper blessings and permission, it may be spiritual sense gratification. Like one devotee who wrote to Srila Prabhupada, I'm telling you a true story. This devotee wrote to Srila Prabhupada that I want to be in Mayapur and chant 3 lakh names every day, 192 rounds every day, like Haridas Thakur. And Srila Prabhupada said, no, 
I would rather have you serve in one of the temples under the guidance of your local authority, the temple president, temple commander. You serve. So this devotee who wrote that letter was with my Guru Maharaj when he wrote that letter. So my Guru Maharaj, Chilaradhana Samaraj tells. So he wrote, got that letter. In those days, Prabhupada's letter would come. Devotees would write letters to Prabhupada. The letter would come. And then it was such a joyful occasion that Prabhupada's letter has come to our center, our temple. All the devotees would come and that letter would be read publicly. So this devotee wrote, I want to go to Navadvip and chant three lakh every day like Haridas Thakur and not do anything else. Prabhupada said, no, you should do seva. So the letter comes and the letter is read. Prabhupada's reply is read. My dear so-and-so devotee, please accept my blessings. I, I think you should stay where you are and continue service. You know what this devotee said to the assembled devotees? He said, I know what Prabhupada means. Because Prabhupada knew this letter would be read publicly. For public, Prabhupada is saying that no, 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 stay and do seva. But internally for me, Prabhupada said, go. Go and chant 3 lakh. Go to Navadvip. So dear devotees, I am going. And he went. He went. He disappeared. He went to Navadvip. And for a few months, he was chanting 3 lakh in Navadvip. And then he disappeared again. And Prabhupada came to Navadvip and asked, where is this devotee? And devotee said, well, he was chanting for some time, but then he disappeared. We don't know where he is, where that Brahmachari went, we don't know. Okay. And then Prabhupada got in his ambassador and was going to Kolkata from Mayapur. And they stopped at a gas station to fuel up. And guess who was putting gas in the car? <laughs> it was this Brahmachari. But now he was in shirt and pant. And Prabhupada Sarod asked him, what happened? You had become Thakur Mahashay. <laughs> he wanted to chant three lakh. Like, what happened to you? He said, oh, I have chanted enough. I have chanted enough for a lifetime now. <laughs> now I have got married and you know, to run my Dhrasta Ashram, I have to work. So I'm working here at the gas station. I'm telling a true story. So what happens is when you do something against the desire of our spiritual master, without the blessings of spiritual master, we are by ourselves, Maya will come and take us. But if we are under the shelter of Sri Guru, the whole parampara stands with us. Like Prabhupada wrote in that letter, with one kick, I can kick out Maya from your life. Have you, how many of you have read that quote of Srila Prabhupada, that letter? Go to Vedabhyas and look it up. With one kick, I can kick out Maya from your life. Prabhupada said this. He's Nitya Siddhu. He's always with Krishna. Jaha Krishna taha nahi, Maya Radhika. So we have to be with our Guru there. So in Mahabharat, there is a story. I will conclude with this. Who was the spiritual master of the Pandavas? Correct. But he was mainly the military teacher, martial teacher. But who was the spiritual master? Who said that? Yes, Dhaumya Rishi. Very good. Dhaumya Acharya. He was the guru. Dhaumya Rishi. He was the spiritual master of the Pandavas. The point is, everybody accepts a guru. Krishna accepted Sandipani Muni. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted Ishwar Puri. And Sri Kesha Bharti Maharaj. So everybody accepts a spiritual master. That is a teaching. Even the Pandavas had a spiritual master. Even though Krishna is there to give them shiksha, but they accepted a guru. And their guru was Dhaumya Rishi. Now, Dhaumya Acharya, he had his own ashram. Every guru had their own guru and ashram. So there Mahabharat describes, Srila Vyasdev writes, Dhaumya Charya, Dhaumya Rishi had a disciple by the name, um, not Aruni, uh, Upamanyu. Dhaumya Rishi had a disciple by the name Upamanyu. And in Mahabharat, his story is mentioned. This Upamanyu, he was given the service by Dhaumya Rishi to graze the cows. He was made Gopal. That you take the cows, graze them in the forest and bring them in the evening. And there were many cows. Several dozen cows in the ashram. After a few days, Dhaumya Rishi noticed that this Brahmachari, Upamanyu, is putting on weight. Like me. So, so Dhaumya Acharya asked him, how come you are becoming fat? So he says, Gurudev, you... Um, gave me the service of grazing the cows. Sometimes I see the udder of the cow is full. 
<laughs> so I drink some milk in the forest. When I feel hungry or thirsty, I drink a belly full of milk directly from the udder of the cows. Go said, no, that milk is supposed to be offered to Krishna. You cannot do that. It is supposed to be offered to Lord Vishnu. So don't do that. I told you to graze the cows. I didn't tell you go and drink their milk. <laughs> Stop. Don't do anything without asking your Guru. Guru Maharaj chastised him. That's why you are becoming fat. So stop drinking cow's milk now. Okay. Okay, Guru. Then few days pass. And after a fortnight or so, Gurudev sees, Bhavya Risha sees that this Upamanyu has become even more fat. <laughs> so what's going on? You, are not, you don't seem to be losing weight. I gave you the service. Graze the cows in the forest so you'll go for long walks and lose weight, become thin. And you are becoming fat. What's going on? Gurudev, I feel hungry. And you know, in the forest, there are many small, small villages. I go and tell them, I am Bhavna Rishi's student. Brahmachari. Riksham Dehi. Riksham Dehi. I beg arms. And when they come to know that I'm your student, no, they give me puris <laughs> and rice and everything. They feed me. But I'm not drinking milk. <laughs> oh, no doing madhukari without my permission. From today, no Madhukari. You are banned from doing Madhukari. Okay, Gurudev. No Madhukari and no drinking milk from the cows. Promise. <laughs> Again, some time passes and this Upamanyu is still putting on weight. <laughs> Bhammirji says, listen, I am giving you a limited diet when you come back to the ashram. With that, it is just enough to maintain your weight. But you are putting on weight. That means you are eating something extra. Tell me what you are doing. Gurudev, I don't do madhukari. Gurudev, I don't uh, drink the cow's milk. But the calves do. When I take the cows for grazing with the calves, the, cow, the calves feel hungry. So they drink the milk. Gurudev says, yeah, that's okay. But how you are becoming fat? He says, when the calves, they drink milk, they regurgitate it. And they have that milk in their mouths. So I go and I lick it. <laughs> I lick all the calves. <laughs> I lick their mouth. So Dhaumir says, Are the calves are very merciful. To feed you, they regurgitate because they know you are hungry. So because of you, the calves are going hungry. <laughs> you are only drinking all the milk. Stop it. Stop licking the mouths of the calves. Okay, Gurudev. Okay, Upamanyu, you are really dull. Now listen, I am giving you instruction. No drinking milk in any form. No doing Madhukari in any form. Okay, Gurudev. Few days pass. Does Upamanyu now lose weight? What do you think, kids? No. No? No. no. He keeps gaining more weight. How many she's at a, at a loss? Now, there was no bariatric surgeon <laughs> in those days. He says, what's going on? Why are you putting on weight? Despite so many restrictions. Tell me what you are doing. Gurudev, I am not drinking milk. I am not licking the mouth of the calves. I am not doing madhukari. Then how you are gaining weight? Gurudev, in the forest, there are nice, nice fruit trees. And I, I, I have a fruit plate every day. <laughs> when I go. Oh, those fruits are meant for the sadhus and rishis who live in the forest, who don't even have an ashram. Those fruits are meant for the poor birds. You are eating up all the fruits in the forest. No eating fruits from today. Okay, Gurudev, no milk, no madhukari, no fruits. Promise. Next day, Upamanyu goes to graze the cows and does not return. The cows return. Upamanyu does not come back. You know what happened to him? He didn't drink milk. He did not do madhukari. He did not eat fruits. But he was hungry. And he could not control himself. So he ate some flowers. Forest flowers. And he ended up eating some poisonous flowers. Which caused blindness. And he went blind. And he fell in a dry well. And fractured his hips. Fractured his legs. Fractured his spine. And he was lying there writhing in pain. Gurudev! Gurudev! And the cows waited for some time, but seeing that their Gopal had fallen, 
they knew the way so they went back to the ashram without upamanyu and upamanyu was crying when bhavme rishi saw the cows had come back without their master he went searching for his disciple with just like sandipani we went searching for krishna and sudama bhavme rishi went with his disciples in the forest to search for this upamanyu 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 where are you gurudev kripa bindu diya <laughs> he's calling out from the well bhavme rishi goes with a torch it's late at night he's looking and he sees in the dark dry well upamanyu has fallen badly hurt badly injured bhavme rishi feels very bad he said upamanyu what happened said, gurudev i ate a flower without asking you i was hungry i couldn't control my appetite i ate a flower but looks like the flower was poisonous it made me go blind and i fell here gurudev bhavme rishi said upamanyu listen once and for all no putting anything in your mouth without my permission get it yes gurudev okay now turn your right ear towards me he is li- lying in the well turn your right ear towards me he turns other disciples go away go i am going to chant a mantra in the right ear so dhamir says upamanyu listen carefully i am going to speak a mantra to you in your right ear you chant this mantra it is a mantra for the ashwini kumaras they will become pleased and they will come and then by their blessings you will be cured okay guru dev he turns his right right ear towards dhamirishi dhamirishi from top of the well he chants the mantra to please the ashwini kumaras he said you recite this mantra very soon the ashwini kumaras will help will appear and they will help you okay guru dev guru dev you can go now i will keep chanting the mantra okay so dhamme rishi goes to the ashram upamanyu is lying there in pain and he starts chanting that mantra for the ashwini kumaras after a few hours ashwini kumaras they become very pleased after 16 rounds <laughs> they become very pleased so the ashwini kumaras appear they are effulgent the whole night sky lights up with these two demigods ashwini kumaras they come and they say what do you want so upamanyu says my body is broken i have got so many fractures injuries please help me heal my body and help me come out of the well they said okay no problem so they take some herbs and they make a liquid medicine a kadha that he has to drink and they give it to him in a leaf cup said upamanyu drink this medicine and your body will become healthy all your injuries will heal drink he says no i will not drink <laughs> <laughs> unless my gurudev tells me i will not drink are baba gurudev only gave you the mantra to call us come on drink no i will not drink ashwini kumar has go to the home rishi with that medicine they say he is your disciple is not drinking only he says first i will ask my gurudev only if gurudev says then i will drink home rishi smiles just like all of you are smiling so okay come on come on let's go home rishi comes and tells him upamanyu okay to drink the medicine <laughs> so he drinks and all his injuries heal his body becomes effulgent he comes out of the dry well and then his gurudev embraces him dhamme rishi embraces upamanyu and says you pass the test if you would have drunk that medicine without my permission you would have failed the test yet again but this time you pass the test now i will embrace you mahabharat describes dhamme rishi embraced upamanyu and with that one embrace transmitted all the vedic mantras into his heart and upamanyu became a pure devotee self realized just with that one embrace by pleasing his guru by passing that test so this is the power of being under the guidance of one's guru and being in the anugatya as they say being in the anugatya of one's guru then all perfection will come gaur premanand
Hare Krishna Guruji, please accept my humble obeisances. All the Shri Prabhupada. Right now. I have a physics background, so just small thing that when a nuclear bomb or atom bomb falls somewhere, in a certain perimeter or periphery, everyone else will be destroyed. So by divine arrangements, when you appear, whole atmosphere is like a bhakti nuclear bomb. The atom atom is filled with bhakti. I have two questions, if I can. First question is that until today morning, I was not aware regarding the backdrop of Sudama Vipra's uh, story that someone else had cursed. Guru Mata had gave and just to save Krishna, uh, he is. So until morning I was feeling, okay, that's fine, that he did something wrong, he did not care, so he... But knowing the facts you shared, why Krishna allowed that to happen? Because his intention, Sudharma's intention was to save yeah. Krishna. So that's my kind of a question, that why, knowing this fact, Sudharma still had to undergo what he underwent. So we can glorify Sudharma for all time to come. If Krishna had not allowed him to become poverty stricken, then today we would not be glorifying Sudama. So Sudama tried to protect Krishna and Krishna tried to glorify Sudama. Bhagavatam Krishna says, you can memorize this verse. Yasyaham anugranami Yasyaham anugranami Tadhanam tyajantyasya Swajana dukha dukhita. Krishna says to that devotee who I show my special mercy, I make him poverty stricken. I take away everything. And then all his swajana, all his family members also will give up. Oh, this useless fellow. Like Avanti Brahman. Lost everything. Family members gave him up. And he goes from dukha dukhita. He goes from one dukha to another. One suffering to another. But in that suffering, he takes sharanagati. He surrenders to me and gets me. Loses everything in this world, but gets me. Paramo Lavo Uttama Shloka Darshanam. So this was Krishna's mercy on Sudama. Thank you. Very small question. One more. Yes. Hare Krishna. Uh, you gave the two uh, requisites or recommendation for practicing devotees that do your sadhana sincerely and not offend Vaishnava. Now, this is an ideal scenario, but we live in Kali Yuga and as a neophyte devotee, I'm speaking for myself, I may have already done either one of them or both of them. So, in this instances, now I realize that, okay, I have done that. But what is the hope? Like, is there some remedy or recommendation that yes. going forward? Yes, in Sri Chaitanya Charitamra and in Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, there is a story <clears throat> of... Um, Devotees who had criticized Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Mahaprabhu's associates, they were students of Mahaprabhu and they criticized Mahaprabhu and Mahaprabhu's associates like Sri Vasthakura, Advaita Acharya. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas and came back to Kuliagram, they came and they begged forgiveness from Mahaprabhu and they said, Mahaprabhu, we have criticized your devotees. We have criticized you and we have criticized your devotees. So what should we do? We've already done it. What can we do now? So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gives a solution. And that is a solution to your question also. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that criticizing devotees with our mouth is like drinking poison with the mouth. Glorifying devotees is like taking the antidote. So one may take poison, drink poison, but then there is antidote also. So criticizing devotees is like poison. And glorifying devotees is the antidote to that poison. So if we have criticized devotees from today, we should take a breath that I will see the good in the devotees and I will appreciate and glorify the devotees. By glorifying devotees, our Vaishnava will diminish and Krishna will forgive us. So we should not do Vaishnava in the future and we should always glorify devotees. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, repeat after me. Vaishnavera guna grahi na dekhae dosh. Vaishnavera guna grahi na dekhae dosh. Kaya mana vakya kare Vaishnava santo. How are my Vaishnavas? Mahaprabhu says Vaishnavera guna grahi. They see the good in others. Vaishnavera guna grahi na dekhae dosh. And they don't see faults. So every devotee we see, when you look at them, we should merit on their good qualities. Everybody has good quality. Everybody has good quality. 
We should meditate on the good quality and na dekha hai dosh. We should not see their faults. And then kaya, this body, mana, mind, and another example. Another example no? of kaya mana vakya kare vaishnava santosh. We should please the devotees with our body, mind, and words. Mahaprabhu said, given this formula. Hmm? So everybody has a good quality. Once my Guru Maharaj was saying this, that everybody has a good quality. And told the story of Yudhishthir Maharaj and Duryodhan. Once uh, Dronacharya told uh, Yudhishthir Maharaj that go and find somebody who is uh, less than you. And he told Drona, uh, Duryodhan, go and find somebody who is better than you. So Dronacharya went everywhere and came empty handed. And uh, Krishna said, uh, Dronacharya said, uh, Duryodhan, did you not find anybody who is better than you? He says, no, because everybody I found, they had some fault. So I could not find anybody who is better than me. Honestly, Gurudev, I'm not being proud, but it's just a fact. Just a fact. I could not find anybody who is superior to me. After all, I am the next king, you know. <laughs> then Yudhishthira Maharaj came and he said, so did you find anybody who is lower than you? I said, no, I tried really hard, Gurudev. I tried, but I could not find. Anybody I saw, I met, I saw them in qualities that I don't have. I saw everybody to be better than me. This is the difference between a genuine devotee and a non-devotee. Hmm? So, um, <clears throat> Vaishnava Gunagrahi, Na Dekhaya Dosh, Kaya Mana Vakya Kare, Vaishnava Sambhash. We keep this as a formula. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hmm. Before we go to the next question, I'm sorry to interrupt this. Maybe one more question. Yeah, yeah, question. Yes. More questions, but one practical announcement. Uh, there was a Toyota car with a plate YYV. Is that right? It's locked now. I cannot see it. That car needs to be moved because it's uh, blocking the road. Anyone with a Toyota car, I think the plate, what I saw was YYV. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna. Just what is the I grabs your instruction about Guru Seva and that's how we can achieve the Supreme Lord. So just so we can understand what's the best way to serve the spiritual master? And how can I really follow the instruction in practice in my everyday life? Um, Hare Krishna. Best way to serve the spiritual master is to follow the instructions of the spiritual master. Like Arjun tells in Bhagavad Gita, Karishe. Krishna, I do not want to fight, but because you want me to, I will fight. I will do as you say. Best way to please the spiritual master is to do what the spiritual master wants us to do and to do it in a first class way. <laughs> that is the best way to please the spiritual master. Like Shivarayandra Prabhu, he did the kirtan the best way he could for his spiritual master. Rupa wanted 24 hour Kirtan Mandali in Vrindavan. He did it. Shila Jayapadana Swami Maharaj was instructed you should have 50,000 disciples. He has 60,000 disciples. Hmm? Shila Loknath Swami Maharaj was told that you should establish the Padayatra. And he has established Padayatra in all over the world now. Hmm? And it's so successful. So many interior villages where nobody goes, no devotees go. The Padayatra goes. And so many devotees, so many Prabhupada's books are being sold everywhere. Hmm? So Janani was Prabhu, Pankajangri Prabhu had told you to do DT worship. They became first class. Pujaris. So whatever our spiritual master, mission spiritual master has given us, we should do it. Shila Bhakti Charu Maharaj was told, translate all my books into Bengali by Shila Prabhupada. Shila Bhakti Charu Maharaj would not take the first meal of his day unless he had finished certain quota of translation every day. And he did not rest until that work was over. So many books of Prabhupada, volumes and volumes. He translated every word written by Prabhupada from English to Bengali. So whatever mission Srila Prabhupada has given us, to do it, whatever mission our spiritual master has given us, to do it in the best possible way we can, 
is the best way to please the spiritual master. Hare Krishna. Karishya Vachanam Tam. Yes, Prabhu. So you say uh, serve devotees with the vacha or like you know, your one. The, the problem is like you know sometimes if you don't have that you know that kind of uh, intention or like you know glorifying people, but you keep on glorifying people just for sake of it, isn't it a pretension? Actually. My spiritual master was asked when he said na, that you should see the good in others. Everybody has good qualities. Even a crow has good qualities, Maharaj said. Even a crow has good qualities. You can even glorify a crow. So somebody asked my Guru Maharaj, how do you glorify a crow? What good quality does a crow have? <laughs> this was just before the Sunday feast. <laughs> what good quality does a crow have? Mara said, crow has very good quality. Whenever the crow will find some food, come, come, come. It will call all the crows, come and join the feast, come and join the feast. He said, are we doing that when we get the Sunday feast? <laughs> we go and we go first so we can get all the sweets. Before the halwa gets over, I want to go. <laughs> Mara said, crow is better. So like that, if we want to see, we will see good qualities in everything. Everybody has good qualities. Okay. You develop that eye. Pray to Krishna and let me see the good in others. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada saw the good in the hippies. What good did they have? They were not clean. They were breaking all the four regulative principles. But Prabhupada saw the potential. He saw them as dancing white elephants. Potentially. And then he made it happen. He made hippies into happy. happy. Because Prabhupada saw that spark in them. Vaisheshika Prabhu's, Shripad Vaisheshika Prabhu's uh, Facebook page is called Fan the Spark. That's what you have to do. There's a spark in everyone. Because everybody is Mama Amsha Jeeva Loka Jeeva Buddha Sanatana. Everybody is Amsha of Krishna. There have to be good qualities. So we have to pray to Krishna to give us that eye. Prabhupada saw the good in even the hippies. Krishna saw good in Pugja. Pugja ya kimu nama rupa madhikam. What good qualities? Did have Kukja have, but Krishna saw, he called her oh, beautiful faced, a oh, beautiful lady, and then actually made her beautiful. Like that, Prabhupada also saw the hippies as potentially pure devotees and then made them into pure devotees. Like that. So we have to see, there are good qualities, we have to find them. And we have to pray to Krishna to help us. Because Krishna sees the potential in everyone, Prabhupada sees the potential in everyone. So if you pray to them, they will give us the vision. Chakshudana Dhiroje. They will give us the eyes to see. Agyana Timirandhasya, Nyananjan Shalaka. Chakshurun Militamena, Asmai Shri Guru. They will give us the vision. Prabhupada will give the vision. Hare Krishna. Yes. Yes. We will go like this. Yeah. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare from his yesterday class, favorable intelligence and responsible. He said you will reveal S and T in the evening class. So I'm still waiting for the The T is like today you to do our T is to do things tidily, clean, to be clean in our service. Whatever we do, we should do it in a very hygienic and clean way. Cleanliness is next to godliness, they say. So in deity worship, in cooking. Everything should be very clean. Uh, Srila Prabhupada, there is a memory of Srila Prabhupada. I'm forgetting the name of Srila Prabhupada's disciple who said that. Yes, I remember. Jai Shri Devi Mataji. Prabhupada disciple, Jai Shri Devi Mataji. She remembers that uh, Prabhupada was, uh, I think, in the LA temple. Prabhupada came and he noticed that the uh, the the sheet on which devotees were sitting on the floor, it was dark in color. And even Prabhupada's Vyasasan color was very dark. So Jayashri Devi Mataji remembers that Prabhupada asked her that, uh, why have you chosen this dark color? So she said, because then the stains will not show. Prabhupada said, no, it should be just the contrary. Everything should be white. So that if there is any dirt, any stain, we can see it and clean it. 
Prabhupada liked everything, liked everything very clean. That's why Prabhupada told us to be clean shaven and have short hair because it's hygienic. You can clean everything nicely. With the beard, then you blow your nose, all the mucus gets stuck in the beard. It's, as a doctor, this is what I notice. <laughs> what to do? <laughs> Sorry, but I have got medicalized. So, Prabhupada made it very nice. He kept us very hygienic and clean. So, cleanliness is important in Bhakti. Okay? Thank you. Hare Krishna. Yes. That was a tea tidy mm. or the C for cleanliness? No, T for tidy. Yeah. C is consistency. We can do something first class once and then fail the next day. We can get up for Japa today and do first class Japa at our Aditya Narayan Prabhu's house and then tomorrow push. That will not be first class. First class means consistently. Every day, good quality 16 rounds. Every single day, no matter what. Like Kadam Karan Maharaj. Even on the last day. 16 My rounds. Like Kadam Karan Swami Maharaj. His holiness Kadam Karan Swami. So C is consistency. Doing it consistently. Thakurji Seva at home. Not just when we feel like it. But every day. So like that. Being consistent in our service. Like Janani Vas Prabhu, Pankachandri Prabhu. 50 plus years, consistently same Mangal Arti, same Shringar Arti, same deities. They didn't say, oh, we want some new deities now. <laughs> same deities. Gopal Bhatta Goswami, same Radharaman. Every day. With so much love. Consistency. Okay? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes, Mataji. Thank you so much for the beautiful class. Hare Krishna. So, we have a question from uh, text 42. Uh, the translation says, The Brahmana said, What could I possibly have failed to achieve? O oh, Lord of the Lords, O oh, oh, Universal Teacher, since I was able to personally live with you, whose every desire is fulfilled at the home of our spiritual master. So, Prabhuji, in this verse, um, I was trying to understand what were the desires of uh, Sugama uh, here, Prabhu? So, Krishna is Aptakam. Krishna is Aptakam. So, uh, Krishna's quality is that all of Krishna's desires are fulfilled. Tara Icha Balavan. Whatever Krishna desires, that is, so, that is describing Krishna. And Krishna, you, whose every desire is fulfilled. It's a quality of Krishna. Krishna is Aptakam. Krishna is Satya Sankalpa. Whatever Krishna decides, that happens. That must happen. So that's the quality of Krishna. Is it mentioning about any particular desire here? Or... No, it's like how Krishna is called Jagat Guru. Okay. How he's called Deva Dev. Mm -hmm. Similarly, he's Satya Kam. That's just an attribute of Krishna. That whatever Krishna desires must, must happen. Krishna has a shakti na, parasya shakti, vividhaiva shakti. Krishna has icha shakti. And that icha shakti makes his uh, desire come true. When Krishna did not desire, Ishwatama should be able to bind him. No matter how much she tried, she could not. When through icha shakti, icha shakti Krishna said, okay, now let me be bound. <laughs> you are bound. Like that. So Krishna is after Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Krishna has many desires. Krishna wants all of us to become devotees. <laughs> him, 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 her, her, her. So many unlimited desires Krishna has. Krishna wants all of us to come back to him. Hare Krishna. Natat bhasyate suryo na shashanko na tavata. Yad gatva na nivartante ta dhama paramanda. Krishna wants us to come. Mat karma krin, mat paramo, mat bhakta sangha varjita. Nirvaira saro bhuteshu yaha samameti pandam. He wants us to come to him. That is Krishna's desire. <laughs> and it will come true. And Prabhupada's mercy. Hare Krishna. Yes, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. At the beginning of class, you gave the Mahabal of Bhakti, the three things. My question is, what is the proper etiquette to honor any one of them? Correct. So it depends on the Shraddha, the faith of the devotee also. 
we should take Shila Rupa Goswami says Sato Vare. We should take the dust from devotees who are more advanced than us and um, who are well situated, who are following the regulative principles, who are chanting nicely, who have the qualities that we discussed yesterday. Shanti Ravya Takala. Those devotees we should take. First class is to take with permission. First class is to take with permission. Take their permission. Like in Chaitanya Charitamrit, Kalidas, in whose connection this verse is quoted, he would frankly ask, Apura Prabhu, you are such a wonderful Vaishnava. With your own eyes, you have seen Nitya Siddha Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada. You have served your whole life Srila Prabhupada. Can I please take dust from your lotus feet? Then if Prabhu says no, because he's so humble, then okay. <laughs> then next time just notice. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Sorry, Prabhuji. <laughs> no, I, Prabhuji said, I know where your shoes are. <laughs> no, this is Chaitanya Charitamra. So that's exactly what Kalidas would do. He would ask, Can I touch your can I get the dust from your feet? And the natural devotee would say no. And so, okay. Then after some time, he would go and hide behind a tree. And he would see where the devotee stepped. And then he would go and take dust from there. But we should not embarrass devotees. My Gurudev tells an incident that happened in one of the temples where a senior Prabhupada disciple came and devotees were so excited to take the dust from his feet. They actually, uh, you know, just went, like almost like mobbed him, right, in trying to take his dust from his feet. And he fell and he injured his hip. I don't know if he actually broke the hip, but he badly injured and he had to be carried on a stretcher out of the temple. They had to call line one then because he could not stand up after that. So Maharaj said, this is such an offense and disservice. So don't do that. So Maharaj said, don't do like that. It should be done with, like you said, that etiquette is very important. Or once I was having prasad and when devotee came and I had not even finished, he just took my plate and went <laughs> And once I was honoring Prasadam, and one devotee came and just took my plate, even while I was eating. And I usually keep the best for the last. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like yesterday, I kept our banana bread as the last <laughs> Prabhuji had made. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, no, I was just saying. So, the, the desert was taken. <laughs> So I'm just giving an example that this is not the proper etiquette. The best way is to serve the Vaishnav. I'll tell you one, one example. One very senior devotee came to Atlanta. Very senior. Sanyasi came to Atlanta and he was so pleased with Amarendra Prabhu. In front of me, he told he called Amarendra Prabhu. He said, Amarendra Prabhu, I love your classes. In my old age, your classes give me hope that Srila Prabhupada's movement is in good hands. Please continue to do the service that you are doing. We are so pleased with you. And he was eating prasad. He took a morsel from his plate and gave it right in the mouth of ah, Amarindra. Very well. He said, whatever blessings I have accumulated, I give them to you. Very well. May Krishna, may Prabhupada bless you. That is the way to receive Uchishtra. To please the Vaishnava's heart so much that the Vaishnava gives out of their own sweet will. But for less fortunate people like us, there are other ways. <laughs> <laughs> but with etiquette. <laughs> okay, Krishna. I want to give a disclaimer that I'm not I'm not the pure devotee that you're thinking, but your listening is so high for me that it propels me to become a more Serious devotee, you are so. <laughs> Thank you for that. But I just wanted to warn you. <laughs> I'm not so advanced. Very encouraging. Thank you. Every advanced devotee feels that they are not advanced. <laughs> Thank you, Prabhu. Any other questions? So it is. So can I just do one thing? Yeah. <laughs>
Hare Krishna. So it's such a wonderful, amazing point. And I'm talking for myself that when I walk out, you know, half of the class is already gone, and after a few days I forget. So if you all can help, if we can all help each other by maybe quickly sharing one point that you really like. And maybe we can take like five points. So just raise your hand and could you just one make it short and this point from the class I really like. And it'll be good for all of us to hear and invite those points. So you know, like to Everyone, please think of the points during the class and please okay. Talk only when you're able to, otherwise there may be more casualties. We have to be strong ourselves. Yeah. No, I like the point when uh, Officer Dhamma and Krishna are holding uh, the uh, sticks and then uh, you know, I make my hand, my hand, hand. So we had never have to leave the instructions of the Guru and then we get to what is the situation. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you. 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 Thank Whatever you do in life, act according under your Guru Dev. If you don't, you are alone. If you do, you have him with you. The Nam is where you are serving your spiritual master. Hare Thank you. Thank you. One thing that I learned the most is the pure, pure chanting, chanting the high quality chanting, and then seeing only the good things in the devotees, not the negative side. Okay. Yeah, I was also having the same point. Like two things you mentioned that uh, doing our sadhana nicely without any compromise every day on priority, and then not uh, doing any Vishnu of that. If you just do this, then everything else will follow. So, okay. just want to continue. Thank you. I think the whole class was lectured, but. One thing you shared that service is important, and you mentioned that cleaning temple and vessels make your heart fertilized. So that will stick to me, and that inspires me to continue. So Thank you. I think Prabhuji back there also have a last point. Yeah, I know that uh, when you said uh, that you know catch the fire hood, you know the mission of the spiritual master and other and catch the devotees. It's just give me all. I mean, it's it's so important. It's so true. You know that. Like, and you want to help each other, cooperate each other, and keep, keep the my mission in, in, you know, in forward and office. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> For me, uh, the point I really liked was like you know, taking the instruction of Guru Maharaj and take it for life and all. Like the way the example that you have to learn about Dhamma Vishnu at his disciple. He was following his instructions, but then in his own way, but he never disobeyed his spiritual master. And the end goal was he got embraced by his guru and he got all that vidya and God, which are, the disciples take for ages and all to learn and some even fail. We don't need to do anything brilliant and not just follow whatever the guru has given for us as an instruction for our lifetime and God. God is going to take us back home, back to God. Thank you. That was really like Yes, we have to follow. Kamalini Mataji, would you like to make some comment? You can pass the microphone. So while the microphone goes, what Prabhuji was saying, we have to follow not just the letter of the instructions, but the spirit behind the instructions. Upamanyu was just following the letter, but the spirit was don't eat anything. So it took him time to get that. Like there was one devotee in a Bhakti Riksha. His Bhakti Riksha leader said that in Chaturmas, one month we don't drink milk. So don't drink milk. So then when that Bhakti Risha leader was invited for prasad to their home one day, they served milk. So he said, oh, but we don't drink milk, right? This month I told you. So no, we have put some water in it. <laughs> so it is not exactly milk now. It's water, so drink. <laughs> so we have to you know, follow the spirit behind it also, <laughs> not just the letter. So thank you, Prabhupada, for that. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Yes, Kamalini Mataji. Just that. Sandi Kani Muni's guru, how um, so many materialistic devotees were coming and just wanting material benedictions. So he's thinking how I can weed them out, like we say, boil the milk. Yes. And just have sincere 
the title and he pretended to be mad. So that that was rather extreme, you know, asking for money and then just uh, being in samadhi and how um and how Santi Tani really though uh, served him in through all of that and uh cleaned and even though he was in internal consciousness. So you know the point like um like Charles Hart said, to boil the milk and um, instead of so many neophyte disciples, you know, um, for the guru to have sonified disciples, how that's the real, the real wealth, you could say. Thank you. I think this, this. Are there any kids who would like to say? Or anyone else, please? Please don't forget to memorize the verse, okay? Vyadhasya Charano Dhimasya Chavali. Yes, I think Mataji has just come here. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Earlier in the episode, always keep yourself on the spiritual platform. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think that. Thank you. I'm not sure of how you said that. After three hours, the food becomes tasteless. Like uh, if we neglect the spiritual practice, then gradually we will lose the taste. And that's a very important take home message for me. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. And your discourse was very good. And I really enjoyed it. And I would like to. Uh, recollect uh, you were saying the, with the same enthusiasm we have to chant each and every day that is my take home uh, point hey, Krishna. thank you very much yes thank you so much so my takeaway is too, I like this point that we should not misinterpret the instructions of our spiritual master according to our convenience. Mm -hmm. So it will lead to fall down. So we should be very, very sincere and strict and attentive uh, to the instructions of our religion and we should follow it, not according to our will, but it should be like as, as it is. is. As <laughs> is. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Very nice point. Hare Krishna.